So what you have in your hands right now is a model for exploring and navigating and getting clarity on difficult issues. So any issue you have in your life, the question you want to ask yourself immediately is, what do I want? The next key question is, what do I really want for myself? Very important question. What do I really want for myself? And the answer was, I want to touch people and impact lives. That's clear. We then asked people, what are your options? What are different options you have for that? Sometimes when people are stuck in a situation up here that they're listless, they're rudderless, we ask them, how does it serve you to stay in your current situation where you're not taking any action? So you notice the question, how does it serve me to say do nothing? How does it serve me? I'm going to go back to your friends. How does it serve me to cut classes, play video games, and essentially coast through life? It serves me because I don't have to take responsibility and there's no risk of failure. So if I don't take risk, I can't fail. So it serves me oftentimes to stay in a situation I don't like. Maybe there's a difficult conversation you've been avoiding. You're in a relationship you don't like. It sucks your energy. This is very common in life. How does it serve you to stay in a dysfunctional relationship? Okay. You shake your head, it doesn't serve me. But if it didn't serve me, you would have got it out of it a long time ago. So remember the, the, the belief that whatever is happening in my life is what I'm committed to. So if you're in a dysfunctional relationship, you can get a t-shirt that says, Hi, my name is Wen and I'm committed to be in an suck, energy-sucking dysfunctional relationship. Because whatever I'm, is happening in my life is what I'm committed to. How does it serve me? Okay. It serves me oftentimes because a dysfunctional relationship is better than no relationship at all. I work with people that are in codependent relationship where there's an abuser and an enabler. And they often believe that being, as I say, in a dysfunctional or abusive relationship is better than no relationship at all, which is what keeps them there. Or if I were to leave this relationship, they would badmouth me. They'd villainize me. I'd be the bad guy. So it serves me to stay in it for those reasons. The question on there that's really important is what's at risk for you to change your current situation? What's at risk is a polite way of asking, what are you afraid of? And oftentimes when you ask people, what are you afraid of? They'll say, well, I'm not afraid of anything. And you, you know, it goes nowhere. But the what's at risk question really gets to the heart of their fear. And then the question I asked over here, are you willing to take the risk? It's a yes, no answer. Yes. yes, I am. Then you can get into commitments. You can start going action. What, what are different approaches you could take? What learning could you get? Um, what support do you get? You did a really good job, and we pursued that. If you say, no, I'm not willing to take the risk, it's too much of a risk to have the difficult conversation and get out of a hard, a hard relationship. Or it's too difficult to risk to begin going to classes, take responsibility for my life, actually set a course. The risk is I may choose the wrong course, and so I'd rather have no course at all than have a direction in my life, because then I can't fail. So some people say, I'm not willing to take the risk of failure. And the answer we have for those people is, that's a good decision. I want to honor your decision that the risk is too high and you choose not to take it because you've made a choice. There's a side effect. And the side effect is you forfeit, you give up your right to complain. Oh, I don't like that part. Oh, it's so much easier to complain about this. Everything in life is a choice. 
So if I choose to cut classes, play video games, and go to pizza parlors, and cruise through the university experience, and then four or five years later, I find out that I don't have the credentials to have a good job in the world, that was my choice, and I forfeit my right to complain about it. It's a huge learning. It's a big part of growing up. And I say growing up not because you're 18 to 22 years old, because I use that exact phrase with your parents and their parents. In a couple of weeks, I'll be working with a person who's 67 years old who needs to grow up. In his sense, it's to make some very difficult decisions that he's been postponing with respect to his family for 30 years. It's terrifying to him. And we'll see if he's willing to take the risk. And if not, then he accepts the consequences of sustaining a dysfunctional family life, likely for multiple generations. So the privilege of us telling you, me, because my partner's not here, us, you know, he's, he's virtually here, okay. I'm sharing this with you today is it's so much greater, better benefit to get this, this at age 20 than at age 50. So you can see the other questions there. Once you've made the decision, if the, you say the answer is yes, I'm willing to take the risk, then you can start saying, like I did with you, right, so what do you want to do about it? What's some steps you're going to take? Classes you're going to take, mentors you're going to, you're going to find, okay? I'm going to invest in some low-cost probes. I'll do certain internships. If those don't work out, I'll close them off, try another one. But you take action. Then the question that we explored is what would support for you look like? It's a polite way of asking, well, where do you, what can, how can I help you? And I had, to, I had to tease it out of you a little bit, because what she really wants is I want people who can be inspiring to me. I don't want downers in my life. 